So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to solve the problem powerful integer. So you are given an 2D integer array intervals whose length is n, where interval i start comma end means all the integers from start to n inclusive start and n are also present. And also we are given an integer k, we have to return the powerful integer. What is powerful integer? Powerful integer is that integer that occurs at least k times. And if multiple integers have at least k occurrences, we have to return the maximum integer. And if no integer found, return minus one. So let's understand. So we are given an interval pair, which uh, represented by start and end of the interval. Now, what is a powerful integer? Powerful integer is an integer that occurs at least k times in the interval. Now, next thing is we have to find the maximum powerful integer. This is our meaning. Okay. So now let's understand with an example, we are given one, two, three. So let's write these interval first, one, two, three, four, five, and so many interval. I am writing till six because that much is required. Like, let's say I am telling one, two, three. So that means one, two, and three. That means three dots. We have three dots. Now four to six, one, two, four, five, and six, three to four. Now let's count the dots at every integral point. One, one. Two, two, uh, one, one, and we have rest of the zero. Now we can see what is the maximum two. So we can see we want only those integers which are greater than is equal to two. So we can see this and this are giving this. Which of them is maximum four? So answer will be equal to four. So in the example, yes, they have answer equal to four. Now how to approach this question? So, so let's understand the intuition before going, before jumping onto that approach. Okay. Now we have n is equal to three, k is equal to two. Okay, fine. Now what we are going to do, just see, you will get like, uh, we have, let's say interval L comma. Now what L comma R suggests frequency of L plus plus frequency of R plus one minus minus. Just do it with me. Okay. Now let's create the array. Let's create the array of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Initially, we have zero. I'm skipping it. Okay. Initially, all of them is zero. Now, what I'm going to say, we have one, two, three. So L is one, R is three. So I will say frequency of one plus plus and frequency of three plus one. That is frequency of four minus minus. So I will say frequency one plus plus frequency of four will become minus one. Just see. Now, next, I will come to four. Similarly, frequency of four, like four and six. So I will say frequency of four plus plus. That means it will become zero, obviously. Minus one plus one will become zero. Now I will come to six. Because it is a R, I will say frequency of six plus one minus minus. So that will become like here should be seven. So it will become minus one. Now let's come to three comma four. So three comma four will say frequency of three plus plus. Frequency of four plus one r plus one that is minus minus okay now just we have got this array in the frequency array in the form of this now just what we have to do just take the prefix sum just take the prefix sum now when i take the prefix sum i will say for this prefix sum is one so this is the one now for this prefix sum is one for this prefix sum is two for this prefix sum is two for this prefix sum is one plus zero plus one plus zero this this will be obviously one. Now, when I take prefix sum till here, it will be obviously one. When I take prefix sum till here, it will become zero. Now, now what we have got, we have got this, whatever we were getting, like doing the brute force, we have got this. How? We can see that when I have one, I was doing frequency one plus plus. That means I will say, okay, you will be one. Now, when I go to three, I will say frequency of three plus one minus minus. Why? Because when I take the prefix sum, we have one. So this one will be carry head. Carry head. When I take prefix sum, prefix sum is what? Previous. We will add the previous value add. So this one will be shifted. So when I come to four, I will subtract minus one. That you should not go ahead. Why? Because you were desired for only one, two, three range. You were started from one and you are ended up till three. When you come to four, you will become minus one. Because at add position, you should not go ahead. That is approach. Okay. So... Uh, this way, we can get the prefix sum 
in bigger of n only. Okay, rather than uh, like running a loop for every range, and then for every range, running a loop for every range, and for every range, running a loop for L two R frequency L plus plus frequency I plus plus like that. So it will take big of n square obviously. I don't want this. So this will become bigger of n. So what we are doing plus plus and after that taking the prefix sum. Now how it will be going to help? Let's understand the approach. You will get it. Now we first create the map area as we are doing frequency file plus plus frequency file minus one. So for we do frequent since we have L comma R, frequency file plus plus that is one will become plus one and three three plus one will become minus one obviously. So one will become one. It was initially zero. Obviously three plus one that four will become minus one because it was initially zero. Now we come to four. Four will become plus one. It will become zero. Six plus one, that is seven, will become obviously minus one. Now we come to three. Three will become plus one. It will become one. Four plus five, it will become minus one. Done. Now this is a map. So the map keeps the element in sorted order. So just keep the elements in sorted order first. One, three, four, five, and seven. Now these are the maps. So whatever is the key, is just write. So I will say for one, it is. Uh, one for three it is one for four it is zero for five it is minus one for seven it is minus one. Now, now here is the current is equals to zero. So the elements that I have written, just see you will ask like you have missed the two, you have missed six. Uh, don't worry, I will tell you later on why I have missed them. Okay. Now, now I will say current is equals to zero. Now when I come this to this point, so I will say prefix sum will be one. Obviously, prefix sum you know like this. This so I'm adding the elements from the back one by one. Okay. Now initially this will become one. So I will say that the frequency till now frequency is one. As it was suggesting that taking the prefix sum will generate my total frequency. So whenever I side by side traverse the array, I will say okay, frequency is one. What frequency I want? Because obviously I want k is equals to two. So this will not be my answer. So obviously I will go ahead and just go ahead and I will see. Uh, let's move this pointer ahead. So I will say uh, current will become plus one, become two. Now I will say is frequency greater than is equal to two. That means current greater than is equal to k. Yes, yes, because two is greater than is equal to two. So I will say okay, update the maximum by three. That this element is maximum. Now, now let's come to four. Let's come to four. So now uh, obviously current will remain two as it is because two plus zero is two. So I will say if current is greater than is equals to k, yes. So I will say maximum will become four. Okay. Now let's go to five. Five will become minus one. It will become one. Two minus one become one. So obviously I can say not greater. Move ahead. Move ahead. I will say it will become zero. Obviously we are done. Done. Now in this example you can say maximum is four. But let's see one thing. Let's see something that I'm going to tell you. This is really important for this question. Otherwise you will get the wrong answer. This is a small twist in this question. Otherwise, question was really easy. Let us say like we have one, two, three, four, and five. And let me say I have missed these four elements. Okay. My range is one to four. So obviously what I'm going to do, I will do plus one here. I will do minus one here. For four plus one, I will do minus one here. So I will say I am missing these two, three, four. So I will say let's k is equals to one. So obviously I will say I will come to one because these elements are not in the map. I will say okay maxi will you will become one and you are done. That five will become minus one it will become zero. So I will not take it because obviously current will become zero here. So it's not greater than is equals to k. So obviously I will not take it. But this is wrong here. Why? Why? Because this one will be traverse add as well. So before this element, this element can also have the opportunity to come as maximum. I am again repeating. I am again repeating. Let me take this example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now when I do plus 1 here, when I do minus 1 here, so that means the range is here. So it will become plus 1, it will become plus 1 as we do in prefix sum. Now, now we have let's say k is equals to 1. So obviously I am not going to take these elements in map. So I will say okay. So you are greater than 1. So maxi you will become 1. And I will directly jump to 5. Because obviously I am taking start and end range. Not greater than that. Why I'm not taking vector? First question. Because if I take the vector, I have the elements in range 10 to the power 9. L comma R can be 10 to the power 9. I can't treat this much size vector. 
That's why I have to create the map only. I have no option. Okay. So now, because a four can also contribute. So that means I am going to pass a flag is equal to true from here. So when I come to five, I will check. Is flag is equal to true? Yes. If it is yes, that means its previous element can also contribute. So this is the main twist in this question that we have to pass flag is equal to true. So when I come ahead and I find that flag is equal to true, that means previous element was satisfying the condition. So this element will say this element should also specify the condition. Okay. So this is the approach. Okay. So let's code up. So code is like, we will create a map obviously to keep the keys in sorted order because I'm not going to take 10 is to 9 bunch of keys. Obviously it will exceed. Okay, and after that, we are going to travel the interval array. And within that, we have L is equals to IT0 and R is equals to IT1. So obviously, what I'm going to do, map of L plus plus, map of R plus one minus minus. I'm not creating the frequency array because I can't store this much elements in the array. Done. Now, after that, I will say, let's say current is equals to zero or you can say prefix sum is zero, anything. Okay. One variable is maxi minus one, bool flag is equals to obviously false. That means no previous element is the candidate of maximum. This will suggest candidate for maximum. Okay, now, now after that, I will go into traverse this map because map is obviously in sorted order. So I'm getting the keys one by one in increasing order. Okay, now I will say that current plus is equal to IT set. That means I am adding the whatever is the keys values. So whatever are the keys values that will be taken, obviously that I was doing in the keys values. Now let's take them current plus equals to it second. So if at any time the prefix sum is greater than is equals to K. So prefix sum is greater than or equal to K. So what I will say flag is equals to true. That means if I have having, let's say one, it is getting the frequencies two. that means at ahead position two, three, four will also give me the greater than is equals to two. So I will, so I will send the flag is equal to true. Okay. And max is equal to it first. Currently I will set. Okay. Now I will say else if flag is equal to equal to, if somehow current is not greater than is equal to k, and we find the candidate that previous element is the candidate. Previous element is the candidate. So I will say just what I will do. Max is equal to it first comma minus one. Obviously, I told this it's because if five is giving me, if five is giving me this, so if one is giving me this answer, so obviously this four can also give the answer because we are passing one, one add. Similarly, five plus plus two plus two plus two. So this four will also become the candidate. So that's why. That's why I'm saying that if flag is equal to true, just take it. And also mark flag is equal to false because obviously uh, the current element is not the candidate. If the current element is not the candidate, that's why I said that the next element is not the candidate for getting the maximum. Else I will say flag is obviously false. Obviously if nothing happens, we will return flag and else we will return maximum. Let's try to compile it in the code and check whether it's working fine. Mm. So basically it's small interval. I let's try to compile it in the code again. So one thing uh, I am again repeating, let, let me tell you, like here is a map. Here is a normal thing. Here is a prefix sum I am taking. Normal sum, prefix sum. Now consider the question is, if prefix sum is greater than is equals to K, we are taking maximum. Then why flag is equals to true? Because every element, because if I'm passing one, two, three, four, and they have all the frequency two, but I'm not taking every element one by one because I'm not maintaining a frequency here. So that's why we have to pass flag is equals to true that previous element is the candidate if current element is not the candidate okay and after that we are passing flag is equal to false because if current element is not the candidate obviously i have to pass flag is equal to false that next element can never become that and add the return maximum so let's submit the code and check if all test cases are running yes okay so what will be the time complexity of this code time complexity we are traversing a map big o of n and like here, if I have big of n for intervals and for every insertion, you can consider log of n. So obviously big of n log n time complexity 
and what will be the space complexity? Space com complexity will be something like big of n. Why? Because we are storing left and right, you can say big of 2n. So obviously removing constant will become big of n. So this is a small standard question and just a small condition flag for considering the previous candidate because I can't store whole ranges. So this was all about code. If you like the explanation, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you.